could you give us a little uh, rundown of your injury situation? Because it's always uh, interesting after the international break. How is everybody? Well, it seems that everyone is uh, is come back in a in a in a very good shape. Obviously, the only two that they're going to be uh, assessed this morning are Tim Howard and Ramiro Funes Mori. That they're arriving from their um, international duties and are the only two players that they haven't been training this week yet but everyone else has been fine and um, everything looks in, in in normal condition. What are your options at left back because there was talk of an injury to Galloway and possibly Oviedo as well, are you, have you got a dilemma at left back? Well I think uh, Brian Oviedo is the one that we're going to assess until right at kick off time I think is the, is the only concern that we have from the last game at at Spurs, uh, Brian had a little bit of a laxity in his medial ligament in his knee, uh, and we need to assess it. And the specialist had a look. And over the next 48 hours, we're going to find out if the game at the weekend is too early or not. It's not a major problem, but it's something that it could uh, it could bring a bit of a concern. Brendan Galloway is fully fit. He's been training with the group really, really well. And as we know, Ramiro Funes Mori can play in that position. So. Clearly, we need to assess how Brian Oviedo is, and we'll take it from there. How's James McCarthy? Great. James has come back. Uh, he had a little bit of a going into the international game. He had a little bit of a uh, soreness in his patella tendon uh, that is developing the last the last stages of the game against the Spurs. But he got through the game, the two games, really, really well, and I don't expect any problems. Tom cleverly because you lost Tom again, I suppose, didn't you? Well, Tom, as we know, uh, I think we we made it very very clear that we had uh, very good news because at the moment that the injury happened, we thought it was a, a fracture. Uh, clearly, the scans revealed that is no fracture, and we were very fortunate. It's only ligament damage, uh, even though it's going to be a little bit of a uh, a long period. Out and injured, this is not going to be as bad as as it could have been. And uh, Aaron Lennon to feature after after coming back to the club. You're looking forward to seeing Aaron in uh, in action. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because uh, Aaron uh, has been working really well in pre-season. He's fully fit. He looks fresh. Um, I've been very impressed in 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 the way that he's he's kept himself physically really really strong and the work that he's done during this period while uh, the international break has allowed us to to put him up to speed. And I feel that he's ready to. To play, how long it will depend a little bit on on the game and, and how we're going to approach it. But clearly, he's going to be in the squad and he's he's ready to have an impact and help the team. Incredibly ironic that we spent weeks talking to you about Chelsea and John and it, during all the window. Now the window's closed. First Premier League game is Chelsea. Um, is all uh, all the talk over the last few weeks going to affect this game? No, at all. No, I think the only thing it affects is that we we understand that the next. The next six games, five of those are the are teams that they finished in the top eight positions on, on last campaign. We knew how challenging the start of the season was going to be. I think the, four, the first four fixtures, they, they've been exactly that. I think we had a very solid start. And Chelsea are just a team that obviously they won the league by a good margin last season and they kept every single top performer and it's going to be a really tough, tough game. They had a, a, a start that probably everyone expected. Chelsea to get more points than the ones they have, but the margins have been very small, and we expect a very, very difficult opposition. So nothing, nothing changes. The fact that we're going to be uh, looking forward to the game, we need to have Goodison at our very, very best, and make sure that we we help each other to to try to be as good as we can. Because when you face a team like Chelsea, that's exactly the way you have to be. Otherwise. It's going to be a very difficult afternoon. But they've been trying to take one of your best players for weeks now. Does that not affect relations between you and, you and Jose, for example? No, at all. No, I think it's part of the the rules. I think you're allowed. I've always been quite vocal on on on. I don't agree with having the transfer window open when the when the official competition is is on. Uh, but in that transfer window, you're allowed to inquire inquiry about players and, and make your offers and. In the same way, I always said that we take that as a as a compliment. When you got clubs that they want uh, or they are interested in our young players, is a really good sign. It means that we're doing something well, and it gives you even a bigger uh, feeling of control when when you can decide 
uh, what to do with those with those attempts. So everything has been positive. I always been very clear that I don't agree from a human point of view to have the transfer window open when the the season is well on the way. I think is devalues the competition and goes against the values of a football fan and the authorities clearly need to look into that. And I would imagine John Stones is one of the first names you put down on the team sheet. That must be immensely satisfying for you. I think he's been he's been performing in a very, very good level. I think John has gone from strength to strength even in a in a period of, of high pressure as you can imagine. I think he's he's used that in the right way. I think he's been he's been uh, Taken the support of everyone at the football club, and then he's performed with an incredible composure and an incredible maturity. Then you see him the way that he goes and he performs for England um, in a very natural manner. And I think it's just again the sign of, a, of the calibre of the player that we have. It seems to have remarkably galvanised your own supporters that they're even singing a song about him, which is, you don't often get that, do you? Fans singing about a player who's decided to stay? Well, I think our, our fans. Throughout the years, and, and and there are many many examples. They are very creative, and they are, uh, I think, they are very astute in the way that they they support our own players with with really good songs. I think this this was the last one. I think we had really good examples around Europe last season, and it's it's just again one of the signs of of our unique support and and how how privileged we are to have them. I gather you're a fan of the song and you've been heard singing it. Is that right? Not really, no. Unless you've been in my house, in my shower. <laughs> oh, cranky. <laughs> <laughs> There's no answer to that. Um, on, a, on a more serious note, there are reports today that... That was serious, that, isn't it? <laughs> um, there are reports today that, that John's looking for a new contract and that that would have to have a release clause in it. What's your understanding of the situation? Well, uh, it's, uh, again, it's, uh, I thought that one day the transfer window will be over, we'll be able to concentrate on the games, and I think that's the only thing I'm r really looking forward to is to concentrate in the game of the weekend and the games that we got ahead of us. Any story or any backlash still from the transfer window I'm not going to entertain and it's not going to be anything different. And in terms of the game itself, um, quite an amazing scoreline last year at Goodison Park, I seem to remember. You won't want to repeat of that. But I think it showed two teams with a clear attacking intent. It, it was a, an incredible scoreline, more than anything, because I think we considered two goals really, really early, but apart from that, there were many aspects that they, they were very pleasing to score three goals. I don't think many teams score three goals against Chelsea, um, especially when, when they were fighting to, to win the league. And from our attacking point of view, it was, was an exciting game. Uh, obviously, I do expect to be a little bit of a different encounter this, this weekend for different circumstances uh, at the back of an international break. Uh, probably it's going to be a less open game than that, but um, the makeup of the two sides is exactly the same. Two teams that they want to take control of the game. It's going to be a real fight to control that football and and to try to score goals. What do you make of Chelsea? Because a bit of a wounded animal at the moment. It's not gone as well for them this season as a lot of people thought it might do. It's only four games into the season, so I think whatever you want to uh, you want to make an assessment is going to be is not going to have. A lot of substance. We all know that they haven't lost any of the top performers that they had last season. I think it's fair to say that they won the league with a, a lot of dominance and, and with a, cu a clear distance. So you do expect to the, to see this side competing exactly the same for the, the every every trophy that they were competing for last season. So I think it's an early early start. We're just looking at ourselves. We we've been in a very challenging start of the season. I think we had a very solid start. I think the competition for places becomes is that as the strongest that we had for a long time and games like the weekend will be very, very important to, to, to shape up in the best possible manner. And you clearly see this next set of games as, as, as a as a great opportunity to push on. But we we always knew that the first ten fixtures were going to be really demanding and they were going to give us a lot of information about where we are and, and how strong we are and Clearly, this is the fifth game, and as I mentioned, we we face in tough, tough opposition teams that they are in good moment of form, that they got real good levels, and we we're looking forward to to face that challenge. Especially when you play at Goodison, um, we had uh, terrific support 
uh, in those sort of games and it really makes a difference and I'm, I'm, I'm expecting uh, Goodison to be uh, at his very best at the weekend and, and clearly to make the difference. Thank you. Just a couple, if I may, just in terms of some of the players uh, there, just how long will Tom be out for, do you think? It's hard to tell. Um, obviously, in that sort of injury, mm, ligament damage, mm, normally you could you could expect a period between six uh, to eight weeks. Uh, knowing Tom and how fit he is and how strong he is, maybe we're looking at the six-week period rather than the eight-week period, but it's, it's a long uh, a long those lines. Remember that any other player that he would have had the same incident, he would end up with a fractured uh, bone and that in that incident. So it, it shows you that he's a uh, a strong boy and and hopefully he's going to be back a little bit quicker than any medical report would tell you. And just in terms of Darren Gibson, Tony Hibbert, Stephen Pienaar. Darren Gibson is training with the group. He's done really really well in the last week. I think we used it for him to to increase his physical levels and and to be involved in. In big spaces and and in in 10 by 10, so it's it's been really positive. Uh, Stephen Stephen Pina and Leighton Baines and Tony Hibbert are progressing well within the uh, uh, mid-term injuries. And as I say, we're gonna assess Brian Oviedo, which is the only immediate concern. Looking at the squad that he was involved against the Spurs, is the only player that we need to make a decision before the weekend. And will Ramiro come straight into the squad for this one? I would expect it. I would expect that he comes back with no uh, problems. He played 90 minutes against Bolivia. He, he didn't play in the next game against Mexico, which is, uh, I think, helps because in order to get back into into the routine with the team, uh, if he if he can be fully recovered, it could help. But we're going to assess him in today's session, and and then we'll make a decision based on that. But I expect him to be uh, desperate to, to be part of the team. Okay. Roberto, you seem very pleased to see the back of the transfer window you mentioned there. You also said you take it as a compliment when bigger clubs are interested in your players and that gives you a bigger feeling of control. What do you think this window has said about the so-called teams just below the top uh, very biggest clubs and their financial ability to resist such offers as you suggested there? No, I think, I think it's, it's a little bit going back to that uh, debate of, of the timing of the transfer window. I think there are there are moments that there is no, uh, you cannot replace players, and it's the timing of of those of those moments within the transfer window, within the start of the season, and and everything gets a little bit in the middle of each other, and and is is quite damaging for a football club to lose important players and, and at the wrong time of the of the season, and I think it's been the case in many in many uh, in many dressing rooms uh, in different football clubs and. That's why I do I do feel very strong about it's about time that we look into it and maybe we'll have to be uh, pioneers and in, in, in be the ones that they do something about it. Uh, I know is is a problem that affects football in global all over the world, and is 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 the is, it, is the time now to to help the players to to help the football clubs and to help the fans to to give clarity. And I think those those periods should never overlap. Transfer window has got its time and is important time and is a time of putting your vision and your project together as a football club. But then, when the competitive action starts, is very much the focus and the concentration should be on trying to win three points at the weekend, nothing else. Do you think that's realistic? Are you speaking to people? Uh, are the powers that be listening? You, are we close to no, that? No, no, the pioneers. No, I'm just expressing my own experience, and I've been involved now in ten seasons in in football, and I could tell you one, two, three important cases in every single window in those periods. So I think it gets to a, po a moment that uh, we need to do something about it and it's not going to be easy, clearly, but there are solutions to, to be found. And just in terms of the so-called big clubs, th there was this consensus that Chelsea would eventually get their way and, and similar with other transfer mm -hmm. situations that didn't happen this time round. Are those uh, clubs below the well-known top four holding greater power now because of the TV deals etc no no I think uh, obviously you're, you're asking the the wrong person um, what we are is clearly very clear in our strategy is in the way that we've been building a young team with uh, young players given a big roles and from our point of view that that the continuity is paramount for what we, what we want to achieve and I felt that from window to window in every window we made uh, progress and in every window 
we end up with the squad being stronger than what it was when we started. And that's always the focus, and, and we'll carry on working extremely hard to achieve that. Okay, thank you. Just, just one more on yep. John. Um, th at the height of the saga, you said we will look after him. That's, the, that's our priority. What, what form has that taken since, since sort of it's all sort of died down? What have you interaction you had with him? But like any other player, I think our our interest is to look after every player that he, he represents our our phenomenal football club. I think every player that he represents Everton needs uh, looking after, needs understanding. And as I said, we're going to look after the human being as well as we're going to look after the footballer. And I think we've shown in this case that that's what we've done and we'll carry on doing that. And our best interests are to carry on developing John to allow him to be a very, very important player for us. And it's, it's, that's, that's exactly what we've de been doing and what we're going to carry on doing, not just with John, with every single player that we've got in our, in our football club. You, just won on Chelsea. You, you said they've got the same players as last season, you expect to be challenging the trophies, but do yeah. you see a, a more vulnerability with them this season than, than previous Jose Mourinho sides? Well, no, I think what you, what you can say about this team is that they haven't reached that winning momentum that they had last season. Um, that's obvious. I think you can have uh, the same players than last season and you can have the same way of playing or the same quality. Sometimes you need to develop that momentum and that comes with good results. I think the, the margins you're looking at, you can assess their games so far this season, the four games that they had and they've been small margins. Uh, apart from the game against Manchester City, probably away from home, and, and that happens. Uh, I, I, I very much expect a very strong Chelsea team with the right mentality, with the right approach, with, with, a, with a team that they are um, hitting the heights that they had last season and they won the league comfortably. So I, I don't think it's, it's just a big difference at all. It's just the early start of the season and, and now we need to make sure that they don't develop momentum against against us. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes, Father. How are you? Yeah, good. Very good. good. Very good. Don't mind us. Well, we'll start eventually. I promise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Yeah. No problem. Could you um, could you reflect a little bit on on what it's like to be back at Everton as a as a permanent as rather than a loan? Um, yeah, it's, it's brilliant for me. Like I said, I've made it uh, clear in a lot of things I've said before in the past. Um, this was the one I wanted, and like I said, from my loan spell, I knew early on this is the club I wanted to be at, and it was, like I said, I'm so happy to be here. What impressed you in the in the loan spell so much that, that made that sentiment possible? Uh, just very much. Just obviously the team is quality side, which helps. But like I said, um, everything to do with the club. There's just something special about this club. What made me feel at home straight away, settled in within the first couple of weeks. And like I said, you have a you have a feeling. Sometimes you have a sense that this is the one for me, and pretty much I got that right away. And is that from the players, the staff, or for everybody? Everything, everything to do with this club, um, staff, uh, the manager, the, the players, the fans, everything. I don't know, just it was something what made me feel that this is the club for me. And like I said, to have it so early in my loan spell of feeling that feeling, then like I said, that was it for me. And the possibility of uh, facing Chelsea this weekend, how, how exciting a prospect is that? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a massive game, um, and obviously, a, just to be back playing would be is, is a um, thing I've been can't wait to do really. Like I said I've trained for the last six seven weeks now, not really played um, played games. So um, yeah, it's a thing I'm I can't wait to get going. Am I right in thinking you've had no game time at all this season so far? Yeah, I've missed. Yeah, I've not played no preseason friendlies. Um, so obviously you do eleven v elevens in training. Um, I've done a few of them, but um, I've not played no preseason friendlies now. That must be so frustrating. Yeah, obviously, they said you train every week, to, obviously to play a game at the end of it, but it's how it's gone, so basically I've done as much as I can really to get myself as fit as possible to, um, for when the games do come around to be as fit as possible. And have you, you've obviously spoken to Roberto, what, what's the feeling about you know actually pl playing in a match situation <coughs> as opposed to training, because different scenarios, are you you're quite comfortable, with, you'd, you'd be fine come this weekend? Yeah, like I said, I'd, I don't see much more I could have done, obviously. Obviously, obviously, if you have the games, it helps. But apart from that, I've trained, I've done extra training, and coming here, obviously, in the national break has helped as well because I've been able to do extra throughout the week, the last couple of weeks as well. So, like I said, there's not much more I could have done um, before playing the game. Put into words what it's like playing in front of Goodison Park because we, you know, we turn up and it often seems a stadium that's got a great atmosphere. And I, I know during your loan spell, you've mm -hmm. seen you charge down the wing and whip the yeah. ball in and everything else. I mean, what's it like playing in front of the Goodison crowd? Uh, it's, it's it's unbelievable. Like I said, they're a fantastic crowd. Um, like I said, I've played against Everton throughout the years, and like I said, there was always you knew when you came to Goodison. Like I said the crowd was always right behind them, but so, even more so, you feel it more as a player playing for obviously Everton. I didn't realise how great the fans actually are, and and like I said, um, playing Goodison, um, it's unbelievable. Why, why did it take so long in the end? Because everybody expected you to come back. Yeah. Everybody knew that you wanted to come back. So mm. what, what what was the delay that held you up? Um, not too sure, to be honest. Like I said, um, I didn't hear much till the end of the window, really. And that pretty much then I knew it was close. Um, obviously, it went down to the wire. But like I said, I don't pretty much know what went on and why it took so long. But um, I, didn't wor I didn't worry or focus about that. I just, like I said, I got as fit as possible, hoping this move happened. And, Thankfully, it did. Did it get to the point where you maybe had to think you could be staying at Spurs a bit longer? Um, well, when it got to late afternoon, in the afternoon, you start thinking, well, is there time for this to actually go through? But um, like I said, it, it did. And like I said, it's, there's no worries now. I'm just, like I said, I'm just buzzing to be here. You're, what, 28 now, I yeah. think, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Do you think this is you here? Could you see yourself being here forever? Um, yeah, I don't see why not. Um, you never know in football, but like I said, um, it's definitely like I said. I don't even think about is this me forever or what. I just obviously this is the one I wanted, and I'm looking to have a successful period here, hopefully for a, for a long time. So as far as the here and now, then I suppose what what would you class as a success for Aaron Lennon? and what do you want to achieve here? Um, like I said, this the, the the quality this this team has and the potential this team has. Um, I don't see why. It can't go to the very top. It's um, 
it's got a lot of, like, like I said, it's got a lot of potential. And for me, personally, I just want to get back to playing the way I know I can and hopefully get a run of games in this team. Like I said, it's got quality players, I'll have to get in the team first. But um, I just want to get to the levels I know I can get to. So from personal, although I'm not saying selfish, but I'm, I'm asking yeah. you to be selfish for a time being and yeah. just talk about you. Mm -hmm. A long run of games would probably be brilliant for you, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course. Obviously, you need a run of games to get up to the, get up to form, and that's that's my aim really. Is firstly, to get in team and get a hopefully a long successful run in the, in, in the team. Brilliant, Aaron, what, when you say uh, you don't see why Everton can't get to the very top, what do you yeah. mean trophies, top of the league, Champions League? Yeah, I don't see why it can't win uh, can't win a trophy. I don't see why not. Like I said, um, this team is filled with quality. Um, not just the starting eleven, just the whole squad, like I said. Um, and I don't see this team definitely should be challenging for Europe. It, it, it experienced it maybe two seasons ago, um, just before I came here, and I don't see why it shouldn't be up there again. A lot was made of those photos when you signed the first time yeah. on loan, and people said you weren't smiling, etc. Yeah. Um, was there any truth to that? And because you've talked of how it took uh, in a, within a couple of weeks, you yeah. were loving the place. Were yeah. you disappointed at the start at all? <laughs> no, not at all. Like I said, um, the shots must have just got me when I weren't smiling. But like I said, um, there was a lot of fun and a lot of banter around it, so which was which entertaining. But no, like I said, from the moment I got here, I was, I was, I was supposed to be here. Can, um, can you explain what it's like being at Tottenham? It's, it seems so many players don't play for long periods of time, mm -hmm. more than maybe other clubs. You, you, sometimes when you see players who move in a, in a transfer window, you forgot they were at Spurs. Yeah. How frustrating is it? And what sort of message uh, does you coming here, playing and getting, as you say, getting that buzz back? And what does that say? Um, well, as I said, Spurs, they've got they've got loads of players, they've got massive squads um, so obviously the manager can only pick 11 so like I said some players do not go for long periods of time without playing but it's part of football these days like I said a lot of the top teams have big squads so these are going to be players who are not going to get the game time they want but like I said for me personally it's, it won't, like I said I just want to get back playing and I had a feeling for a long time and obviously coming to Everton alone I knew that like, this was a place for me and like you said, I can't, obviously I can't wait to get back playing really and like you said, get that buzz back. Having seen what it's done for your career, would you would you sort of recommend it to others that, you know, sometimes the grass can be greener on the other side, you know? Um, yeah, of course. Well, I think any footballer will tell you why they're not playing. It's, it's not as, it's not enjoyable really. So every, every footballer wants to play. So obviously if you're not playing, obviously sometimes it is best obviously to move on. And obviously, like you said, um, that was obviously the case for me and it was time for me to move and like I said, but like I said, I'm over the moon to be here. Can you just give a quick word for Wayne Rooney, you played with him for yeah. England and mm -hmm. he's now England's all time record leading goal scorer. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's an unbelievable achievement. Um was well, such a great player from like I said, from early on I broke him with him, um well, he's already in before me and like people don't realise I think he's got some unfair criticism and um like I said Scored the amount of goals he's done, and like I said, I think Waz is only still 29, maybe. So I think he's going to go on and not just break the record, but he's going to probably smash the record. Aaron, you made it clear Everton was the club you wanted you wanted to come to. Does yeah. that mean you turned down the opportunities from elsewhere during the summer? Because obviously you had to wait a long time. Yeah, um, there was. I think there was other clubs interesting, but to be honest, I I didn't really even entertain it. To be honest. Um, Everton was the one for me and it was the one I was waiting for regardless so um, like I said I didn't really entertain anything else and really I just sat there hoping this deal went through and thankfully it did. It, it's it's, it's a quite a leap of faith though to, to turn down, it, when you know that <coughs> you know, that bow of mine just playing at Tottenham, yeah. to the, turn down opportunities to go elsewhere in the hope that Everton yeah. are going to come, you, you, you must have had some confidence maybe that that was, that was going to be Yeah well, I wouldn't say I turned stuff down to be honest. Um, like I said, I was like I said from the loans, but this like I said, you you have a feeling of this is the one you wanted, and I was willing to wait like I did to the last, very last day, a very last hour for this one to happen. And regardless of anything else, like I said this is the one I wanted, and this is the one I see my my future. At, and thankfully, it all went my way. The end of the season, we've got the Euros. Does that play any part in your your thinking in terms of what your ambitions are for this season? Yeah, my it, it does to be honest. Um, I do want to get back in the England setup. Obviously, I've been out of it for a while now, but um, like I said, it's 
I loved playing for England and I've, I've, I've missed playing for England and like I said if I can get a run of games and get up to the form which I know I can get to who knows hopefully I could um, get back in the squad well, We've seen how some of your, your new teammates have, have flourished yeah. at England like Ross, John obviously Jags is there a lot so mm-hmm. this is this is pre- presumably an ideal environment for you to, to showcase that, that ability to get back inside Yeah of course um, obviously the players you just mentioned um, top draw players I've known of obviously Jags and and obviously Gareth Barry as well for a long time obviously Ross as well a little bit and Stonesy but um, well, there's a lot of English players so hopefully the England manager will be coming to watch a lot so it gives me a better chance to um, show what I can do if, I, if I'm playing yeah. Thank you Thank no you. Thanks Good luck Aaron Good luck Thank Cheers, you Cheers mate Thank you.